Hello. In recent videos, we've been looking at the concept of the Macaulay duration of a series of payments, and we've solved some problems about that. In some future videos, I'd like to look at some theoretical problems that would be longer to help us understand what duration is all about. But in between, I'd like to do some shorter problems, shorter videos that focus on sample exam problems, in this case, 2017 SOA sample exam number 121. Given the Macaulay duration of a three payment annuity due, we want to find the Macaulay duration of a four payment annuity due. Now, you might be scratching your head and wondering why the emphasis on the number of payments and these are annuities due instead of annuity immediates. Uh, well, it's basically because it makes the problem easier to solve, and we'll see that as we solve the problem now. So here's the situation. Two annuities, annuity A pays one at the beginning of each year for three years. So that's going to be an annuity due with three payments. Annuity B pays one at the beginning also of each year for four years. The Macaulay duration of annuity A at the time of purchase would be time zero, is 0 0.93. Both annuities offer the same yield rate. You could call it I or J, whatever you want. The goal is to calculate the Macaulay duration of annuity B at the time of purchase at time zero. So let's go ahead and start by making a couple number lines. First one for A. These payments of one occur at the beginning of each year for three years. So that would be three payments of one at times zero, one, two, and three. And then we have the timeline for annuity B, extending out one more year with one more payment, beginning of each year for four years at times 0, 1, 2, and 3. And then you need to recall the definition of Macaulay duration. Now I've mostly been describing it as a weighted average of times of payment, but you also can just think of it as one fraction. We're given the duration of annuity A to be 0 0.93, and we also know that's a fraction where the bottom of the fraction is the price of the annuity at its present value, according to the given yield rate. Um, that's an annuity due with three payments of one, so you could just label that with a double dot sub three with unknown yield rate i. And the top, recall, for duration is taking the times of payments times the present values of those payments and adding them up. So we'd have zero, I'm going to go ahead and write zero even though it won't affect anything, zero times one, the present value of that first payment, it's occurring at time zero, plus one times V, I'll call it for your present value discount factor, that's one plus I to the negative one, and then two times V squared. Of course with the zero there you don't have to include it, uh, and you can just write the top as V plus two V squared. And we want to find the duration of annuity B, so that's a question mark, but we can write it symbolically as 0 times 1 plus 1 times v for this payment plus 2 times v squared for this payment plus 3 times v cubed for this payment, all divided by the price of annuity b, its present value, which would be a double dot sub 4 i. Okay, so there's your basic setup, and so you, the, the goal is to find this thing. So you, I hope you're saying to yourself, well, I could, if I could find V and or I, I should be able to finish the problem. How are you going to do that? Evidently, this, this equation is what we need to use to find uh, perhaps V, and that should be a clue that perhaps we don't want to use the formula 1 minus V cubed over I here because that will give us a cubic. Maybe instead we should go ahead and write it out symbolically. This becomes V plus 2V squared on top, and on the bottom... It's going to be 1 plus v plus v squared. Yeah, that's going to give us a quadratic equation in v. We should be able to use the quadratic formula to solve the problem. Okay, that's the big thing to realize here based on the fact that this is a three payment annuity due. That's what, what helps us solve the problem. We can use the quadratic formula. So multiply both sides by 1 plus v plus v squared. We're going to get 0.93 v squared plus 0.93 v plus 0.93 equals 2v squared plus v. I think I'll subtract everything from the left. 0 will equal uh, 2 minus 0.93 would be 1.07 times v squared. 1 minus 0.93 would be uh, 0.07. And then we have a minus 0.93. Now I use the quadratic formula. Maybe you want to skip ahead instead of watching me use it. 
we want to have v to be negative 0 0.07 plus or minus, and in fact it's just going to be the plus because we do want a positive answer here. Square root of 0 0.07 squared is 0 0.049, excuse me, 0 0.0049, minus 4 times 1.07 times negative 0.93, just using the quadratic formula, all divided by 2 times 1.07. All right, let's find this product we, we're ultimately going to add here, no complex numbers. 4 times 1.07 times 0.93 gets added to 0.0049. Take the square root of this thing, subtract 0 0.07, and divide by, this would be 2.14, divide by 2.14. So it looks like V is 0 0.9001529. That is V. It's not the final answer, even though I circled it there. But let's store that and register as 0. Probably is going to be helpful to find I as well. So I need to take 1 over V and then subtract 1 from that. I looks to be 0 0.1109256. I'll store that in register 1. And now we have what we need to finish the problem. We can just use this equation right here to help us finish it. And perhaps we should get practice realizing the top of that fraction is also uh, the present value of an increasing annuity immediate. We could write this as IA with three payments, because this is going to be zero. Three payments, I, divided by A double dot 4I. Let's just go ahead and find each of these. Let's, this one's the easier one to find. Um, so again, we want to have V here. I'm going to find first A4 without the double dots. Thinking of it as annuity immediate, and then I'll multiply by 1 plus I. So there's V. Raise it to the fourth power. Subtract from 1. Divide by I, which was in register 1. The bottom of this fraction is, well, not quite. I almost, I almost forgot. I've got to multiply by 1 plus I. 1.1109256 times 1.1109256. There's that's the correct answer. This is 3.43978609. That's what goes in the bottom. I'll store that in register two. Let's find the top. A little practice here with the formula for an increasing annuity immediate uh, would be a double dot. Actually, that's that is a double dot there. Minus, uh, this is three payments here, three times v cubed over i. So let's find a double dot three. Go back to v. We've got to cube that, subtract from one, divide by i, multiply times one plus i again, because it's a double dot, times 1.1109256. There's a 3, that's what goes there. I guess I'll store that in register 3 here. Lots of registers. Store 3. Let's find 3v cubed. Here's v, cube it, times 3. Subtract what's in register 3. Subtract from that. And then divide by i, which is in register 1. Looks like this is... 4.7087814. We're almost done. Divide now by what's in register 2. That. And the final answer is 1.369 if you round it to three places after the decimal. And looking at the answer key for this problem 121, SOA sample exam from 2017. This corresponds to answer B on that sample exam. Thanks for watching.